Hey everyone, Boomzy here with the Gunpla Network. Today we're going to take a look and review the Master Grade Hyakishiki 2.0. Of course, this video wouldn't be possible without those fine folks over at Hobby Link Japan, the world's largest online shop for hobby, tools, toys, and everything in between. With the option of a private personal warehouse, currency filter, worldwide shipping, and much, much more. So if you're interested in this kit or any others, be sure to check out their link in the description below. Now this is the Hyakushiki straight out of the box without any panel lining. Uh, there are a few foil stickers. I didn't use all of them. None of the uh, dry transfers or any of the stickers are placed on here. We just wanted to do it as is so we could take a look at that. And the first thing that you may notice is the fantastic gold plating on this unit. It is all mostly undergated, pretty much about 90% of it, but man is this thing gorgeous. Before we get into the size comparison, I did want to show off the stickers. Here's the foil sheet. Uh, basically just use the lenses and some of the scope pieces for the cameras. The entire dry sticker sheet with all those little caution, warning signs, so on and so forth. And the dry transfer sheet here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the size comparison. Here it is next to the Mastergrade RX-78 the high grade and the SD cross silhouette. All right, so something else you might notice when you pick this kit up, it's actually fairly heavy. Not only are we looking at that spectacular gold coating, probably one of the best that I've ever seen on any Gundam kit out there, just period. It looks good from all angles. This thing is going to have a heck of a shelf presence. But with that being said, I wanted to show the weight difference, so I'm going to go ahead and get my rip and tear here. Alright, let's go ahead and start off with the Master Grade Gramps. This is the Origin version, with only the beam sabers on at 3.49 ounces. So, keep that in mind, 3.49 ounces. Now we're going to go ahead and put the Hyakishiki Master Grade 2.0 at a 4.51 ounces almost an entire additional ounce that gives you the idea of how heavy this kit actually is with all that gold plating all right let's go ahead and get into the articulation and some of the gimmicks now i want to start with the head first as it is a little bit difficult so i'm going to bring an additional flashlight so we can take a look at the additional eyes that the kit comes with as well as the head and the fantastic sculpt of the mold that we have for that here you can see with the flashlight, it is very dark inside of that crest. You can see those normal red eyes, wow, that you would normally see in a typical Gundam style head. And like Frankenstein's monster, we can just go ahead and pop this off. Now I will stress that this antenna is so fragile. Like even when I was doing a little bit of touch up paint on the back here because it wasn't quite undergated, it felt like I was going to break it in half with just touching it with the Q-tip. But our boys over at Bandai hooked us up with two antennae so that way you can get some great reception. I would just recommend removing the head when you do this. As you see it is just a clear plastic piece and if you try to push in and up it should bring it out but be careful because you may move the sticker sheet and if you're like me and like it perfectly in there uh, that may be an issue so in the foil sticker sheets you are going to receive a pair of ray-bans and this digital kind of boot up scanny looking one it's really difficult to see so let me try to get more light in there there you go definitely saving up his call of duty perks to get that now, no matter your shape or style, the Hyakushiki got you covered on those shades. Now, before I put the head back on, I did want to show how it is actually on there. It's the style for the bar instead of just the regular peg style, which gives it really good articulation. And we're going to look at that right now. You will get a left and right, but you kind of got to like move it a little bit to the side it's got a little bit of this head wiggle but you really want to be careful with this antennae and here's a little bit more look here of it going up and down side to side it's got pretty good motion you just gotta watch the armor piece clipping here so one thing to keep in mind is i put the head up first 
and then bring it over that little neck cuff for the armor. That way it doesn't scratch. It is a nice gold plating, but it is kind of weak. Again, majority of this is undergated, so you're not gonna see too many nub marks anywhere. The cockpit is a little bit different as, let me see if I can get my other light here. All right, got my other little mini light set up. This one, you're gonna wanna move the side and the side. It's gonna be really difficult for me to show you this. Um, and then you're gonna want to flick up this cockpit, which sounds a lot easier than it is done. You can use like something a little bit harder than the beam saber I would recommend. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe like a guitar pick. And you're gonna flick that up and bring it up. And there you can see that it's open. And if I move my little flashlight in there and inside there, you can see Quattro. Now, something interesting about this kit is not only did it come with uh, the standing and the sitting pose, but it came with an additional set of runners for another set of them on the same runner that shares for the red on the accent parts. So you get four Quattro, wait a second, Bandai. Taking a look at the torso, you're gonna get a lot of wiggle room here. Um, it's even got like this ooh motion as well. Nice. 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 You're gonna get a really nice bend back as well as forward. And here's a look at that at another angle. Great for limbo and dodging bullets. Probably one of the only troublesome things on this kit are these side skirts. They're on a peg, but they come off fairly easily, especially with the amazing articulation that the legs have. Front skirt will move up. Now, if you pull too hard, this crotch piece will pop this out as well. Back skirt, we've got a little bit of flippy flappy and two slots here that can hold onto the beam sabers which also has its own movement up and down. Here's the kick up to the front, bend at the knee. You're gonna be able to get a crazy bend at the knee and that's because of the half transformation mode. This kit has fantastic part separation and color separation. With a lot of paint and work, this thing is going to be even better than it already is. Just some additional movement on the piston and the vent on the back. The foot is going to get some side to side motion up and down and a really crazy toe tuck. You are gonna get this half transformation, which is a little strange. Um, basically, if you don't know, the Hyakushiki was in a prototype mode and they wanted it to transform if you want to see kind of like what the transformation would be like then check out the review that zeta just did on the delta um, over on gunplay network as well and as you see here it's got this little tippy toe thing <laughs> a lot of people were commenting about my flamingo smooth criminal so we'll go ahead and give this a shot here let's see if we can make it work do, 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 do. Don't copyright me. Something that you might not notice right away is this weird leg gimmick. As you can see, there is some crazy engineering going on in there, which gives it like this weird uh, thigh gap thing. <laughs> not really sure what this is for, but it does help with its articulation and its crazy ability to pose. You will get this crazy sidekick if you move uh, the side skirt off and you can go ahead and twist that around and do this uncomfortable thing with the knee. I can already feel people commenting that it hasn't happened yet. And we got the stanky leg. Moving back up the kit, we're gonna take a look at the shoulder. Armor gimmick here, boop. Here it is from another shot, boop. Little shoulder gimmick. Not anything too impressive, usually pretty standard on those nicer master grades, especially the 2.0s. Arm rotation, shoulder movement, arm extension, rotation, some amazing piping detail as well as part separation, and this little extra gimmick that is pretty awesome. 
There's a little detail of some guns on the cuff as well right there on the hand guard as well. Only one set of hands. This is all you need. This is the peg and play style as I call it. Basically all you do is push on the bottom here. That will release this peg mechanism and all of the weapons will go ahead and lock in to this peg style. The fingers will all have their own little individual rotation and movement other than the thumb. The thumb can only do this as the fingers all can bend forward and get to this point and family friendly. So, oh, and the thumb does like to pop off just like any other Master Grade. Well, that thumb went flying off somewhere and thankfully we don't really need it anymore. We're just gonna take a quick look at the side skirts. They do have a little bit of movement, but they will come off fairly easily. Now I did remove the backpack because I wanted to show it on its own. There is a peg hole that fits very, very snug onto the back of the unit. That is the peg that you will attach. Here you can see all that piping detail, very nice. Again, a lot of color and part separation, a little bit of movement there on the thrusters. The binders have a ton of movement. Got a little bit, got a little bit of stinky binder, rotation, and a little bit of a bend back and forward. Here's another look at that bend. Really, really good. And even if you wanted to, you could bring them back and give it like this cross little thing on the backpack as well. But from the side at this angle, you can see how aerodynamic that backpack is. First up, we got the clay bazooka, looking really nice. It's got some simplistic part separation, as you can see, the gunmetal gray showing through there. And you got a little bit of articulation for the handle. And it's gonna have that peg style on the gun, which you can latch on to the hand and get it to hold fairly well. Inside here, you're gonna see a clip gimmick, which is really cool. It's already part separated color-wise, and you can get that in there and close it right up. The back detail, nothing too spectacular. And then there is a clip here, which you can actually attach that to the backpack, which is one of my favorite features about any mobile suit. If you've been around in the channel long enough, this thing can hold all of its weapons. On the backpack, you're going to see these little notches, one on each side, and that's where you're going to attach the clay bazooka and or the rifle. So let me show you that really quick. And it's gonna go on just like that. Then up next, we got the beam rifle. Good color separations, got that navy blue, and that is a gold piece that goes all the way through, which is really cool to see. Barrels kind of lackluster. Um, this back detail, maybe want to paint that. It'll look a little bit better. Again, same thing with the handle and the peg and hole style for the holding of the gun. And if you want to attach this to the backpack, all you got to do is pull this forward and notch it out. Grab that piece and flip it up. You're going to see another notch. And we're going to put that right there on that same little peg mark. Sorry, the... Uh, binders kind of creating a shadow. There we go. Now you can see it a little bit better onto the backpack. There is also a additional uh, red clip if you wanted to try out some coloration, maybe something a little bit different than what's provided. You could do a little bit of test painting on this one. This is an extra piece on the runner. Then you will get two gold beam saber hilts. This is going to focus really weird because there's so much shining and reflecting right now but you're gonna get two of these and they have that same style peg and hole uh, mechanism there on the saber. And all you're gonna wanna do is take something uh, kind of slender, like a guitar pick to be able to pop those out so you can get that attached to the hand. There's two of these Mountain Dew colored style beam effect parts and you're just gonna go ahead and attach that onto the saber like, whoop, like so. And one of the cool features about that is you can go ahead and attach those beam sabers onto the butt flap like this. They do go better up this way 
but uh, you can get them on this way as well. It's up to your preference really. I mean, honestly on the box art, it shows this way. But you can do either or. And these are some of the attachment pieces that you will need to be able to attach that P Bandai piece. So if you do plan on getting that or tracking it down, I would highly recommend keeping this in your stock somewhere safe or marking it. I'm gonna put a piece of pap uh, paper or tape tab on there and mark MG Hyakishiki 2.0 P Bandai. That way if I end up do finding it in the future, I'm gonna pick it up. And last but not least, there is a little tiny peg which you're going to attach into the back of the skirt. We've seen this many times, so I don't really have to show you that. And you're just gonna go ahead and be able to attach that onto your action base like that. And here it is with its entire arsenal. So what do I think about the MG Hyaki Shiki 2.0? Well, I just wanted to thank Danik, the community, and HLJ for bringing this kit into my collection. Not only is it one of the most enjoyable builds that I've ever done, but it was just a joy to see on the shelf. Anyways, let's start with the appearance. The beam resistant gold plating is unlike any other that I've seen from Bandai and ever since this kit, since 2005, I haven't seen anything quite like it. It's usually that like mustard curry yellow gold or like the really, really bright gold and it just kind of looks a little strange. This one looks a little more natural in between a mix of that gold and silver. Not to mention with this kit, 90% of it is undergated. There are not a lot of large areas in the gold that you will have to clean up. If you do, you can use some gold paint and a brush or a gold leaf marker and a fine tip q-tip like I did just to clean up some little minor pieces. The gold plating is slightly fragile and can scratch easily, so be careful when you're handling this kit. The color separation and parts separation is very impressive. This kit will definitely have a gaudy presence on your shelf. A minor issue aside from the side skirts are the hands. The 2.0 and the 3.0 kits have this strange thing going on with the thumbs. If you've ever built one, you know that they tend to like to fly off randomly and then they go into the abyss. So if we can get some Fs in the comments for those missing thumbs. The articulation for this unit is quite insane. Whoever designed this, I would love to give you a giant hug as it is one of the greatest kits that I've ever got to pose and have in my collection. The possibilities are truly endless when it comes to posing this kit. And it also looks great on an action base where you can get it in the air and really show off its sleek and aerodynamic look. This kit is definitely going into my top kits that I've ever built in my whole entire life as it, it did something and plucked the heartstring uh, for me. I don't know if it was like a recommendation from the community or just the sheer love for this kit. I, I just feel like it's completely underrated. So if you haven't noticed at me gushing all over this kit, uh, do yourself a favor and pick one up for yourself in the link in the description below over at Hobby Link Japan. That's it for this review. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe during this time. If you need us, be sure to check us out on our Discord. All your favorite content creators and admins are there. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the community as well. We just hit 20,000 subscribers. So a huge thank you to everyone out there for all the love and support. We cannot do this without you. And as always, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Boomzy with the Gunplay Network, and don't forget to keep building.